I've been asked by quite a few people to do a video on how to strip down and clean a set of hen salt roof prisms. Um, I haven't had a video out for quite a while. One of the reasons being is because I'm now finding myself in the middle of the South Atlantic on the little island of St. Helena and the, uh, the internet access is pretty uh, slow because it is um, satellite. So anyway, this is what I'm going to be covering today. But before I do, I was in the middle of uh, stripping out the eyepieces on this big girl over here. I might, um, if anybody is interested, show how to do lens cementing and prism cementing at a later stage. Let me take you through these things before I set them on the floor. They're absolutely amazing. You come all these miles away from home and you come across a set of these. I'm sure you'll be interested in seeing them. I've never, ever seen a pair of these before except once in Hans Seeger's book. These ones are numbered number three. How incredible are these? The only problem is some Muppet has tried to get into them before and uh, instead of taking his time, what he decided to do was to go in via there, look at the chips, I'm not sure if you can see it on the 120mm lens there, which is such a shame. But they are such magnificent beasts. Absolutely incredible. The, uh, the ocular was chipped, so I now, have now taken it out. It also needed to be it was rather cloudy, the cement was beginning to break up. So I'm in the middle of re-cementing that. But anyway, let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing, which is the roof prisms. I'll set these big girls on the floor because they are some weight. I've yet to, uh, to weigh them. They've got to go in excess of 40 pounds. They're absolutely huge, massive things. But they're really quite basic. Once you get into them, there's nothing complicated about them at all. Anyway, where were we? Ah yes, roof prisms. These are the little babies, aren't they lovely? The only thing is with these, I'm missing the top disc. If anybody has one, I'll gratefully, gratefully pay a few quid for one of them. Because uh, I like them to be complete. But these are lovely little things. Now, um, if the, the strip down procedure is exactly the same for the 7x56, the 10x50s. <laughs> Um, there is no, no uh, difference at all. What I'm going to do is, these ones are probably easier to work on. This is my set of 7x56 pullet side dense glass. Lovely thing. So first off, let me show you the ocular strip down, which is exactly the same as any other binocular. It is a reverse thread, so if you grab the eye cup part, hold the diopter scale and turn. As you can see, that is a reverse thread. The more you go down, the looser it becomes. If you keep on doing this, as you will see, eventually it will come out beautifully. And remember this works on every other binocular, whether it's roof prism, Poro 1, Poro 2, this is the way they work. And you see, that's what you've got. That's how you strip it down. I'll put this back, because these are, have already been cleaned. I've no need to, uh, to take it right out. And to put them back, it's ex completely the reverse. Put them in. Hold it, I'm trying to get the angle on this so you can see it and I can hold it. And it's just completely reverse. Hold it and turn the top part of the ocular upwards. Once that grips, 
You just keep doing that, 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 and then what will happen is that will tighten up on itself. Right, now to get into these, they're not complicated, you just need a really good pair of eyes. First off, look around the top part of the binocular. You will see somewhere there, there are indents. There's one there. Those hold tiny, tiny but grub screws. Obviously, you're going to need a really fine screwdriver. So if you go into those, they can be difficult to remove. If you go in there, loosen them off and they will start to come. Now, there's normally two or three of them. Sometimes they're under there. Sometimes they're on the front face. I'm not sure whether they follow a pattern because I've found them all over the place on many different models of this. Sometimes they're even on that band. I'll show you on this set because it's probably better, more definition. You see on there, there's one there and that's on the band. Then you've got another one there. Then you've got another one there. And finally, you may find one, there it is, right under there. Once you've got these loosened off, as I'm sure you're all aware, biggest failings on these binoculars is the hinges. A lot of them are rotten. A lot of them have had a lot of corrosion, so you have to be really, really careful here. Support it and hold it tight whilst you unscrew. There you go. This is now, this will come right the way out. And that is what you're left with. Set that to one side for the time being. And now, when you're looking inside, this is what you will find. Now, some of them have this retaining ring. Those late war dialects don't. But they all have the same, basically, the same construction. So first off, you need to remove this. You can either do this two or three ways, with a screwdriver into the slot there, or a ring spanner. I've loosened this off, so it's easier for me to show you during the video. Once you've removed this, again, set that to the side. Now, this is what you will find on removal of that. This is exactly the same as in there, because they don't have that ring. Once you've done that, you will find that screw on the side. You need to remove this before you can get into the prisms. Now note, you have a plate under there as well. See the little plate? That holds the whole thing together. And you'll see what it does in a minute once you remove it. So we remove this screw. And the retaining plate should just literally fall out. There it is. Don't be losing that, whatever you do. Lose that, you're screwed. Now we've removed that, you will see that there's a big hole there now. And this part fits right the way into where there. Now this is the part that holds all the prisms. Don't be worried, just be careful. Now sometimes these will come out on their own accord. Sometimes they won't. 
But because that fits in there, there is a gap. Albeit very slight, there is a gap. Now, what the aim of the next part is, is to remove this whole housing from this outer housing. So, nice and gently, put a screwdriver into that slot and prise it gently until you get a nice gap all the way around. Remember, this isn't a race. Even if it takes half an hour, it takes half an hour. Just gently, gently go round with a very fine screwdriver. Now you can see it's trying to come out now. Once you've done that, gently with it, try not to turn it. Gently remove them. And we'll find now this is what you're looking at. There are your roof prisms. Aren't they amazing? Fantastic things. Now, I'm not going to remove these because I've already cleaned them and the video would end up being miles long. The way to remove these, you don't need to remove this, this plate. So those screws stay exactly the same, let them be. These two now hold these two bits of brass here. And these are what hold your prisms down onto the plate. You will find you've also got two spigots, so you can't misalign the prisms. The prisms have to go back one way, so don't be frightened and thinking, oh my word, how am I going to do that? Because they look quite complicated. They're actually not. They're pretty basic. You've got a little hole drilled in the bottom of that prism, another one in that prism, and they fit onto two spigots going up through this plate here. So undo those, take them out, clean them as we've already discussed in the other videos and then put them back. Make sure that these are nice and tight. Once that is done, it goes straight the way back the way that you took, took them out. You align the hole and you put that back exactly the same way. Now collimation on these is a little bit of a pain in the arse. But once they've gone together, that's it. Once they've gone together, you put the plate back in the reverse order. Now remember, there's a little lip there. That little lip fits under that recess there. So this has to go back only one way. I find the easiest way is to slot it in like that first, hold it with your finger, turn it that way, and then you can screw back like this. Again, it's all really preference. But you'll, you'll work out exactly what suits you. This can be a little fiddly, huh? There you go, look at that. The old man's smiling on me today. So that 